Inside View. I'm your host, Kerry Ryan, and as always, I'm joined by Jake Piacenti, Chris Nuto, and Lisa Polina. How are you guys? Hi. Great. Hello. It's another week here in paradise, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we cut the small talk and get into it? All right. So earlier Wednesday, Jamie Lee Curtis found herself in Fox News crosshairs when an, artic an article suggested her advocacy for gun reform is hypocritical given the firearms she wields in the upcoming Halloween film. Pointing to several of the actress's tweets calling for action after mass shootings in Orlando and Texas, the report called Curtis one of several Hollywood actors who uses firearms in their film while preaching against them for away from the set. Curtis says that the Fox News accusations are silly and that she has always been clear on her gun reform views. I fully support the Bill of Rights. I fully support the Second Amendment. She also added that she has absolutely no problem with the people owning firearms if they have been trained, licensed, and a background check has been conducted and to renew their license just like we do with automobiles, which are also weapons. So, I mean, she's not wrong. I mean, movies are fake. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I didn't see the story until I started seeing the memes that were on that were on Twitter. Oh yeah, I did too. Yeah, did you guys see that one? Um, the one with the Santa Claus? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we have yeah. one of those. Yeah, actually. I think we have the picture. I don't know, but it was the one where it was like, Tim Allen like supports the he supports like the Christmas or whatever, but he oh, killed there Santa it is, Claus. Yeah. Oh, okay, I was like Tim Allen murders Santa Claus in 1994 movie despite advocating for celebration of Christmas. <laughs> like, no, he's so funny. I saw another one. I saw one that's actually about Donald Trump. Um, I don't, we have that one too. I don't know if it's there, but it's because he was in uh, Home Alone too. Oh yeah, so in Home Alone 2, real Donald Trump helped a child separated from his parents, but in real life, dot dot dot. They could look into this too. So that kind of touches, you know, on a, a bigger spectrum other than a joke. But I mean. I just think it's ridiculous. The whole, like, the whole. It them, is, and I think like, it, yeah. they're targeting her for just using a gun in a movie. Yeah, it's like they're really just reaching now. And I read too that like she took precautions in the film. Like she made sure, like in the movie, her character like had the guns they were locked away, and that they were only ones that like there was like a shotgun, like ones that were only people that she feels are like appropriate for people to have. Yeah. So I mean. It's, even though it's just a movie, it's fake, she still put her like views into it and made sure it was something that she wanted to be represented by, which I think is awesome. So, but I mean, do you think that like, like roles define like actors? Do you think that like this follows anything else that? No. Because no. I mean, does this mean that the guy who plays Michael Myers is <laughs> like, a murderer? Murdering people can never die. <laughs> no. So, no, definitely not. Yeah. I mean, but Curtis isn't the only celeb this week to speak about politics. Taylor Swift has gone public with her political stance this past week. The 28-year-old Grammy winner took to Instagram to share her thoughts on the current political climate ahead of the midterm elections, encouraging her followers to register to vote. In the past, I've been reluctant to publicly voice my uh, political opinion, but due to several events in life and in the world in the past few years, I feel very differently about that now, Swift said. I've always have and always will cast my vote based on which candidate will predict, predict protect and fight for the human rights I believe we all deserve in this country, she continued. I believe in the fight for LGBT rights and that any form of discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender is wrong. I believe that the systematic racism that we see in this country towards people of color is terrifying, sickening, and prevalent. In the 24 hours following after Swift's post, there were 65,000 registrations according to votes.org director of communications, Kamari Guthrie. So I mean, she has some sort of power obviously in what she did and she got some backlash I know from a lot of people were saying she's too late like do you guys think that she was too late in voicing her opinion on because she's never done this before this is the first time she's ever said anything about where she stands in politics I don't think she's too late I mean I don't think it's ever really too late to voice your opinion on something like I understand what people are saying like all, a lot of this has already been said before for the most part yeah. but I don't, it's never too late to voice your opinion and, and uh, celebrities have a great deal of power because they obviously have a lot of attention. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think she's necessarily too late. I just think some of the stuff has already been said. Yeah. I mean, I just think that, you know, she's had a bunch of opportunities, though, to really come out and say something. And then, I mean, I guess it's better late than never, really, because voting in Tennessee had already has ended registration, so she really bumped it up, and it just shows that she can make a change. Yeah, I think, I think it was just trying to, like, if an access to like get the numbers up, you know? Yeah. Like, look, I support these opinions too, and you should get out and vote. And then her people who like her are gonna go out and register to vote because they she the they share similar opinions to her. Yeah, yeah. like like Jake said, like she's got a lot a big fan base, obviously. She like came out like when we were pretty young, I'd wanna say. Yeah. 
So, like, obviously her fans are old enough now to register to vote. Yeah. So with her coming out with this political stance, a lot of her fans might be like, oh, okay, like, let me go out there and register. And obviously the spike isn't so this political. Is also, I wanna, this is kind of contradicting a little bit what I said, but is it also, like, a persuasion thing? Because they, they have fans, so are they – is she like limiting people to their own views and just saying what she says? Like, oh, I like her, so I'm gonna agree with what she says and not actually thinking about yeah, it Yeah, I mean, I think that she just like kind of split her fan base between like parties, but I mean, let's just, we should just move on to another two rivaling competitors, which starts with James Gunn, the ex-director of Guardians of the Galaxy series, who's been hired by Warner Brothers and DC to write with an eye to direct the next installment of the Suicide Squad franchise. It's the first job he's taken since he parted ways with Disney, which let him go in July in the wake of old controversial tweets that had been compiled by journalists and sent to Disney. And I mean, we everyone knows Marvel and DC have like, they just have a huge battle between them always, and Marvel always comes out on top, in my opinion. So I mean, what do you guys think is gonna happen if he directs it? I think he's like a really gifted director, but I just, DC has just been laying like really bad groundwork with all of the like the movies that they've been doing. So I don't really think that him coming in is really gonna fix that, the inherent problems that they have with like their cinematic universe right yeah. now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I know like someone, I saw somewhere that it said that, you know, he's a great director, but still DC has not a good yeah. like graphics and everything. Like everything yeah. has fire in the background and he has like a comedic stand to it, mm -hmm. but it's like it DC isn't like that. They yeah. tried it with Justice League, but it just, it didn't work, so. Yeah. But I mean, and everyone was very upset about it too. I mean, the passion of fans is universal, whether in movies or in sports, which throws me to that in sports, um, throwing for 71,941 yards over the course of an NRL career is pretty impressive. But so is walking 71,941 yards in a day. Both of those feats were accomplished on Monday night in New Orleans. Saints quarterback Drew Brees completed the former in a win against the Redskins, making him the NFL's all-time leader in passing yardage. The latter was completed by two Brees fans, Ben Gallagher and Brady Forkin. The host of the NFL.com's The Checkdown started the 41-mile pilgrimage at Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport in Kenner, Louisiana at around 3.30 in the morning on Monday. They walked all day taking the Mississippi River Trail and making their way through the French Quarter before ending the journey at Mercedes-Benz Superdome in time to catch the Saints take on Washington. I mean, I I don't like walking from <laughs> one building to the other. So to, that's 41 miles. Like, that's absolutely I, I love stuff like this. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like you'll hear about it for like two or three days and it'll kind of die out. But yeah. like, I don't know. I think stuff like this is really cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a... That's a long way to walk. I mean, and there, there's a video that we have of them. There's, well, there's a video of them. They actually got to meet Drew Brees in the end. And there's a video that we have of them once they finally got to the, yeah, you could see them there. They finally made it all the way. I mean, what time does a football game start? Like, do you get there? They probably I start mean, around like yeah. six or seven. So they probably got there early. Th that was hours. Like, look, I would I would not be walking. Quarter I don't know. I don't know. They one day is a lot. They didn't seem like they were that tired. I mean, like, they seem like they were, that's like me after I walk up a flight. I mean, steps. my knees crack every <laughs> time I bend down, so I don't think I could walk 41,000 miles. But they look happy, and I mean, I mean that's a great accomplishment. And I mean, in the end, they got they got to meet Drew Brees. So I mean, for just they did something the right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and also Drew Brees actually did. He got to that point because this game was in hopes that he was gonna, you know, make that yard. But imagine if they walked all those miles and he like just fumbled or he got hurt <laughs> in the middle of the game and then. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That was before. Yeah. It was before. Oh, it was like I in honor. They're like, he's gonna do it today, so we're going to walk in honor of him, so we can all accomplish this together. Wow. But imagine. That'd be they would have been like, yeah. next game. Yeah. <laughs> do it again. Another. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, good for them, but. Better for us, because now it's time for a commercial break. So stay tuned for fake news with Chris and our interview with Mayor Barlow. Hey, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10.
finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, by the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're <laughs> spending a lot on... Was it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back to the Lakeside View. Every week we ask students on campus their thoughts about a certain topic. This week, Chris decided to run for mayor of Oswego. Let's see how that went. I didn't see you there. I'm Chris Nudo. So I've heard that we had the youngest mayor in history in Oswego recently. And you know what? He's 27. And I'm thinking, I want to be the newest, youngest mayor. I'm 20 years old, and I think that we can make it happen. I have some new, interesting policies. And I'm going to ask the kids around campus what they think about them. So let's go. I want, I want to fix the roads, and I want to get Taco Bell here. How do you feel about that? The roads have always been like so if you fix them, good stuff, good stuff. Um, Taco Bell will be fired. I also do um, agree that you know the Taco Bell project has been taking a while. I've heard about it since my freshman year. The people need Crunchwrap Supremes, and I'm willing to deliver it to the people. Sir, sir, I'm running for mayor. Can I please ask you some questions? He just doesn't want to talk. I don't. He's been standing there for hours. He had to choose between dating a singer or dating a drummer. Who would you date? Um, I feel like a singer because I feel like the drummer tried to beat me up if I do something wrong. So the singer would probably like write a song about me that's sad and be a hit, and then I'm like. I want to ban open-toed shoes. You know, it did just they're just they're disgusting. I don't want to see people's toes. Now, what do you think about that? You have some problems, my friend. <laughs> so hand sanitizer kills 99% of germs. 99.9% .9 of germs. What's what's going on with that 1% and how come we're not doing anything about it, you know? Like, what can we do to get that 1%? That 0.1% actually. Like, what what is it? All right, so we have a geese problem here in Oswego. You may have noticed that it's all over the place. I have a way to solve that problem. Okay. So every household is gonna be required to have one goose inside. Depending on the people that live there, it might be two or three geese. You're, we're gonna domesticate them, don't worry. They're gonna have collars, you can name them, you can do whatever you want, but we're gonna have to do it. It's the only way. What are your thoughts? Um, like, what about the people that are scared of like animals and stuff? Cause I'm scared of animals, so I would not want a, a goose like in living with me. And I just think that someone should have to, uh, every, every household, should have to have a domesticated goose in it. You can name in it, you know, maybe name him Jerry. That seems like a nice goose name, but you gotta keep it in your house. Now, what do you think about that? Um, it means, I don't know if you like geese or not. We're gonna install a second sun. It's just way too cold here. I've been talking, I've been talking to the higher ups and I, and I really have some traction. I think I can get the second sun installed within the, like the next year. What do you think about that? I think that would be great. Um, lake effect snow is not the greatest, especially with my car. Um, it causes a lot of problems, so I would definitely appreciate a second sun. I'll put you right in the office if you get a second sun up there. All right, thanks, because uh, I have people like Galileo telling me that it's not possible, it's not doable, but I just think Galileo was full of it. I want to move Oswego to Florida because it's too cold here. I think that we should, I think we should just abandon the town. We should, ab no, should, we should abandon the town and go to Florida and then we just rename it Oswego. Wow, I mean, oh God, what does one say after that 
little great, you know, <laughs> piece of work. I, I, I think he should be nervous because I was getting a lot of traction. <laughs> People seem to really think I was running for mayor, that, and I am. I'm, I'm, I'm announcing my, uh, my candidacy for uh, 20, 2020, all right? Sunudo for mayor. I'm not a crook. We're going to move it to Florida. <laughs> We're moving Oscar to, to Florida. To Florida. Well, let's, <laughs> talk, speaking of the fake news, let's just start out by clarifying that the mayor is not, he's, he is 28, he's not 27. So you got to do your Very fact. Well, if you're going to compete with someone, you need to get his, the facts. His it birthday was, was only a, a couple weeks ago, right? Um, Still it pretty was. young. I mean, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, it, it is what it is. But, I mean, do you feel that you have what it takes to be the mayor of Oswego? Do you know enough about it? Like, he it's cold he's, he's and we are lacking here. Taco Bell, so I, I think mean, I think Taco Bell grew up in Oswego. He yeah. knows Oswego. Oh, yeah, so, I don't I know mean, anything. He had a good thing with the goose thing. The goose, the goose yeah, thing, yeah. the goose thing uh, though. Did is that geese? Geese. That's the, the geese. The plural. plural. Goose, 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 goose. Well, if it's a singular, it's one goose, but if it's multiple, it's geese. I would love to have a goose in our place. No, I'd eat cereal with my goose. I mean, maybe you you and Mayor Barlow after the show can get together and just discuss kind of discuss we're gonna, the we're options and work together. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I think that's that. the best so, option. Yeah. yeah, so that's <laughs> what I think that we're going to do for that. But it is time for another commercial break. So when we come back, Mayor Barlow will be joining us. So stay tuned. Is how are you precious okay? Please. Take out the precious, way too cheesy. Okay, yeah. Just go, hey, how are you? Nope. How's your day? Yes. Don't, yeah. don't be cheesy. Uh, yeah, I figured. So, uh, what'd she say? She's still typing, I'm not sure. She never takes this long. Huh. I wouldn't worry about it, give it a few minutes. Okay. Hey, bud. Hey. What? What are you doing October 17th at 2 p.m.? I don't know. What are you guys doing? Funny you should ask because we're actually watching the Media Summit Red Carpet Show at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, October 17th on WTOP 10. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to the Lakeside View. I'm Carrie, and we are joined today by Mayor Billy Barlow. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. So can you just give us a bit of a rundown of just kind of the past two years for you? So it's been a busy two years, obviously. I'd like to think we've made a, a significant positive difference in the city of Oswego. We've netted about $18 million in grant money for various projects. We've paved about $3.5 million worth of roadway. And uh, we've done quite a few waterfront projects to actually capitalize on waterfront. So there are some, some things I'm proud of, and, and there's other accomplishments uh, I'm proud of as well. So we're just going to jump back for a second. The video that we just saw, what are, are you feeling threatened? Do you, <laughs> do you feel like that your seat is up for grabs right now? I mean, I think they were worthwhile topics. I'm not sure how much traction they'll get among the uh, older crowd, but uh, I look forward to campaigning and debating the issues that matter. <laughs> uh, one of the, so one of the things that when I was telling people that you were going to be on the show is something with Taco Bell was brought up. And I know that that's been something that's been in the works for quite a while. So can we get a confirmation of is there a Taco Bell where there'll be one? There's a Taco Bell. So I think I announced earlier this 
this year that uh, there's a Taco Bell development coming where Ponderosa used to be on 104. It's on the east side, so it'll be a little, a little drive from SUNY Oswego, but we're getting one nonetheless. They're actually building one in Fulton. Once they're oh. done with Fulton, they'll be here, so it looks like next spring. So we'll still be here for that. So th that works for us. Okay. <laughs> Another thing is, speaking of that there's a distance, there's you know a road work that's happening. And that's another big thing, like a serious thing that students were saying, you know, with their tires and everything, that there was a big plot of road that was worked on at once. Is there any update with that? Because I know a lot of the medians are, they kind of dip in there. And that's something people are concerned about. Yeah, so uh, there were actually two different projects going on at once. The city, uh, we administered a $1.1 million uh, pavement paving project earlier this year with, uh, that wasn't 104, it was the side streets. Uh, and then the state is actually doing uh, the 104 paving project right now, and that started at SUNY Oswego and is going all the way out towards Lowe's. Uh, first, we had to go through and make all the intersections handicap accessible for people who use uh, battery-powered scooters and wheelchairs and so forth. And uh, now they pave the road, and then they will go back through and kind of remeasure all the uh, sewer grates and manhole covers and raise those up so that it's a nice smooth surface. Yeah. So. It's a great improvement, and uh, if you remember last year and even before that, 104 was a terrible road, so it's great to finally get Yeah, the get snow that definitely out. messes that up for sure with all the potholes and everything, so that's awesome. And I know we're getting a lot of more, like, you know, there's a lot of new things that are happening with the uh, downtown revitalization initiative that uh, we received a few years ago. Can you, for people who don't know at home, do, can you just go into a little bit of that, how we attain that and everything? Sure, the $10 million downtown revitalization initiative was a grant we won in July of 2016. It was right after I took office, uh, and it was actually a competition. 122 municipalities in New York State that year competed for $10 million uh, $10 million in grant money and only 10 municipalities won out of 122. We were one of them. So I lobbied the governor's office hard and our state legislature uh, very hard to get that money. We got it. And now we have 12 economic development projects. One of those projects I actually announced today and that is another 20 um, smaller projects uh, using $545,000 of the 10 million to help small existing business owners. A lot of the $10 million was used to uh, help develop big multi-million dollar projects. This half a million, I wanted to help existing smaller businesses in downtown already, and that's what this money will do. So how is the, you know, the people of Oswego taking, you know, the news and all the changes? Because obviously it's up uprooting, you know, everyone, and there's things being happening all at once, you know, or is anyone saying anything negative about this at all? Uh, I mean, you there's always uh, some naysayers and a little <laughs> negativity, but I think for the most part, people are, are happy with the downtown work that's being done. They're happy with a lot of the neighborhood revitalization and restoration work we're accomplishing. We just did uh, a $250,000 project at Brightback Park, getting access to the, to the lakefront and having people be able to go out on the dock that we put out there, use the overlooks, walk in that area of town. So. Uh, a lot of the feedback I get is, you know, finally we are doing something with our historic downtown. We are bringing back our neighborhoods, capitalizing on our parks and utilizing our waterfront. So that's good. Uh, we still have a ton of work to do and we're not going to stop now. We have a lot of projects to see through, but I think we're gaining and uh, we'll continue to make progress over the next year. Yeah. Is there anything that you're like specifically excited to start working on downtown, like any smaller part of downtown that you're like really excited to kind of bring in, change, make it better? There's one uh, major problem. Everybody's si excited about the water park. That seems <laughs> yeah. to be I was going to ask that because I, I read that and I was like, ooh. Yeah, that seems to be, I think, what the public's most excited about. And they just leveled uh, the land and they're going to start building that soon. But I'm looking forward to a project that's actually going to start in about two weeks, but it won't be finished until spring. And that is uh, if you're on Water Street by Old City Hall, Ferris Wheel, Coffee Connection, there's an empty piece of, uh, it's actually roadway right now, it's called Market Street between Coffee Connection and the Ferris Wheel. And we're going to raise that uh, area up, make it a platform, build a stage, and build a place for SUNY students, young millennials, people who live downtown to go hang out, congregate, do your homework, see some entertainment, grab a cup of coffee with your friends, and actually have a place to go downtown that's kind of cool to hang out outside and hopefully give people a reason to visit. Yeah. Definitely a reason, you know, to stay not just for school, but stay for the summer as well. You know, sure. definitely. Yeah. Um, is there so in that? Is there going to be like a lounge? Like I heard there was going to be like maybe like an, a, a rooftop lounge is going to be in there. So we debated 
the design for a while, and I really wanted it to be open air. Yep. Uh, so it's it's actually about a uh, $680,000 project all told of, in, with improvements to Water Street and improvements to this park, the design of this park. And they'll have benches, it'll have a stage, we'll have a small canopy over the stage, some planters and pavers down uh, to make the place welcoming and some lights. So it's really the point of it is to just give people a place to meet outside, catch up with friends, grab a cup of coffee, hang out if you have takeout food, go and hang out there for a little while. And I actually budgeted $20,000 in the city budget next year to help bring in maybe some acoustic acts yeah. and, and diversify the music offerings that, throughout the town. That sounds awesome. We're actually going to take a quick commercial break, and, but when we come back, we'll have more with Mayor Barlow. Preventing Wi-Fi. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Want to watch a movie? Go to WTOP10.com and select Movies on Demand. You can find some of your old favorites and some new ones, too. And it's free on campus. Watch and enjoy. Welcome back to the Lakeside View. We're still here with Mayor Barlow, and we're going to go into voting because I think that that's something really important, especially today, that you know a lot of younger people aren't voting. So I mean, what what is it to you? Because I mean, you're you're 28, you're you're a millennial, you're you're young. So what does it mean to you to, to vote? Because I mean, you got got into office so early in life. So well, I think it's important and it's valuable to elected officials uh, for young people to get involved and participate, not just young people, but, but anybody really, to get involved and participate. That starts with voting, but even continuing past that, being part of the debate, part of the dialogue, even reading up on what your local, state, and federal government's doing and to help with some accountability so politicians know we're paying attention. But for young people, voting's important. I always say, it's, it's interesting because young people, I would argue, have the most to lose over the long term. We're going to be in this country, in this state, in this city longer than most people who are older than us, right? Yeah. So uh, we have the most to lose over time based on the policies and legislation being enacted and who is in office. Uh, and we need to get out there and make sure our voice is heard because we're going to be here 30, 40, 50 years from now to see the impact and feel the impact on these decisions. Do you think that more younger uh, like politicians should be throwing their hat in the ring and trying to get out there, like make it more of a young man's game rather than uh, <laughs> rather than some older politicians? You're you're baiting me to give you a compliment so when we <laughs> debate next year. Yeah. You can say I actually try to support you. Um, I think I think it's important, and I think younger people, uh, it's almost like. Our attention span isn't as long. We're more fast-paced. Our lives are much more fast-paced than I think um, other age groups are. And it, I know I, I strive for results every single day. It's, I get so impatient that as soon as I get done with one thing, I'm on to the next thing. Uh, or if something's not getting done or I'm getting a bit irritated and frustrated, uh, I always joke, I ask my department heads the same questions over and over until I get the answer I want uh, because we need to deliver results fast. People want to see change. They want to see uh, things actually getting done through government. So I think by nature, young people are faster paced, higher energy, and that pays off in government and politics. So, uh, And I think the public is actually supporting younger candidates uh, more than we've ever seen, and that's exciting. Yeah, so, and I, th I honestly, I think that since I've been up at Oswego for been a year now for you and I, Lisa, I think that you've been doing great. I've been seeing a lot of, you know, positive results. The Taco Bell is a plus. Thank you. Did you hear so. this? You hearing this? So. Yeah, I'm, here. I'm hearing I mean, it. I'm hearing it. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, everyone at home, for watching, and we'll see you next week.